Uh, welcome everybody at the retrospective where we look back on what went well and what went wrong and what we can improve um, based on the last release, 8.16. Um, and Sean has the first point, but I'll just read it up. Uh, this, the notes of this and this specific recording uh, will be public in the kickoff as well. So did you know that? So let's get started with what went well. This release, like, I couldn't believe, I was, I was a little bit pessimistic about what we would be able to get done because, well, there was Christmas and then um, other holidays. And then we went to Mexico with the majority of us uh, and we still were able to do the whole ID to production thing on Google Compute Engine and it's just amazing. And it was done during the summit. So that was really impressive. Uh, besides that, we also shipped a lot of other cool things. So it can't believe it was again the best release ever. Victor, what else went well? Hey, <clears throat> so for the issue linked in the schedule, um, we are moving toward um, a new uh, navigation um, for the project settings. Right now, it's a cog to the right. And so that went very well this release because uh, we were able to chop it up into multiple um, releases. So each issue could be released individually, and we didn't know what could be uh, released all at once. Um, so in a previous iteration, we actually tried to do it all at once uh, and was not successful. For, but for this one, we were able to chop it up. Um, and so UX and engineering and product all sat together at the outset to have a plan. Um, and then toward the end of the release, um, Jose had, and, and team had already finished um, three of the five things, but the th uh, third issue was not merged in. So um, he didn't have to rush and say, Let, let's merge this in quickly because the first two were already merged in. So I think this is a great example of just chopping it into individual pieces. Um, and we don't have to rush for that last, uh, that, that third particular one because it wasn't necessary uh, for the first two to be successful. Um, so um, fingers crossed, we'll get the rest of um, the remaining three in. Um, and actually that third one should be in like this week. And then the remaining two should be in for 817. So I'm excited about that. Uh, Jacob? Yes, sir. thank you. Um, so the, what went well this release, the front end planned uh, quite well, and we were able to get, even with the um, other stuff going on, we were able to get uh, like 98% of the things uh, finished. Camille. Okay, uh, we shipped the first iteration of the CI API improvement. Uh, it actually shows a really big sense, so it seems like a very good direction to follow. I, I don't really see who is next. Uh, Some. Uh, sorry, James no. is next. James, sorry, James is next. Um, yeah, so basically, um, we forgot to set the either the milestone to a dot sixteen or the deep into stable level for eighteen uh, metric words, which was quite a lot. <laughs> that means that I have to go and ask people and say, hey, um, does that mean that these should go in eight dot six seventeen or eight dot sixteen or and you know sometimes it could be seventeen or 16, I don't know. Um, so it happened both ways. So it's very difficult to guess. So um, yeah, we, we should definitely um, get better at that. Um, uh, next one is also mine. Um, we also um, sort of ignore the um, rate compact check uh, thing, which is uh, which fails in in the list of builds and because we can you know we can merge anyway we can ignore it and then it's merged with warnings then we forgot to we forget to um create a anima for the um e version of of the fix or whatever so um the problem with that is that when we pick into stable then we have to do the merge ourselves and it could be something that you know we we don't know very well or like myself you know ended up fixing some css stuff or things like that which is a uh, be hard for me to, to get sometimes because you know you know the differences in in any and uh, CE you have to check double check and that takes a long time so we we get better at that then that would be great um, we obviously have the uh, now some improvements for reading that we have we um, have daily CE to E merges and stuff like that but um, but still uh, even though I got quite a few conflicts already and I I did remind people anyway on in the um, merge requests. Um, so, um, yeah, uh, that we should make the, uh, that was a fail. 
Yeah, we should. I think there's an issue with that uh, compact check. Uh, Remy may know more, but sometimes it may actually fail, and because the um, the clone is too shallow or something like that. So, um, but um, yeah. Next um, is Camille C testing. Okay, uh, I don't know about you, uh, but for me, the testing in the last week was really painful. We hit a lot of 500 errors. We hit a lot of uh, unbalanced test suits. Uh, we hit a lot of a lot of master being read, and then actually all future magic was being uh, read. I saw that there is a mention from Stan about uh, infrastructure issue, uh, but this is definitely something that uh, we should. Uh, Focus probably in this release on improving that for everyone. Sean, your item is next. Sean? I cannot hear you at least. Sorry, I have headphone issues. I hope you can hear me now. Um, because we couldn't deploy a release candidate to GitLab.com for a long time. Um, we didn't notice that project size limits were broken by a community edition uh, merge request that was merged just after the 8.15 merge window. And the whole reason we merged it just after the 8.15 merge window was so that we could catch this kind of issue uh, in advance. Um, Drew says, we also deployed on Summit Travel Day and in the day to support with requests. Um, yep, I really regret that, but the alternative to deploying on Summit Travel Day was to wait a day longer and we'd already waited like I think at least a week uh, if I'm right James and you know we, we really didn't want to wait any longer than we already had. Um, the reason we couldn't deploy I think James has more uh, insight into this than me but we just had a migration that was uh, not slow it wasn't a performance issue it was just a correctness issue on staging and on lab.com um, yeah. So we, we spent a lot of time yeah. waiting, fixing it in CE, waiting for that build to pass, merging to E, waiting for that build to pass, cutting the next release candidate, waiting for the package, deploying the package, finding out that we needed to make another change, and then starting again, which is quite a frustrating process to, to go through. Um, next up is Jacob S. Thank you. Uh, so the great merge when Build Succeeds Crisis of 2017 was mainly due to uh, an understanding of how TurboLinks affects JavaScript and what gets loaded where. And uh, the tests that were in place to catch that the merge when Build Succeeds was failing didn't actually catch it. Even though the tests were there, they just they didn't catch it. And also no one else who was reviewing it um, caught it, so it went out. Um, and, um, and so then we wound up fixing that, uh, a little late in the game. Um, we did get it fixed before, uh, the, the, uh, end thing went out, but it did wind up, up in there, which was bad. Uh, also because things went in very late in a couple of instances, there was no times for anybody to see it for no eyes to be on things. Um, so, uh, some people wound up squashing bugs on a Saturday on the day before the release, which is one, not cool for the weekend, but also not cool because it's so close to it. And that's, you know, danger zone. Uh, what can we improve? James L. Um, yeah, so apart from that, I created a, a separate issue similar to the one Marin created, um, for the A.15 release. Um, just with a list of observations. Um, some of them I already mentioned, like the um, peak and stable or milestone not being set, um, but also like deploying to staging uh, takes a long time. Um, has some issues with the um, with deploying itself. Uh, there's a separate issue as well for that one, that link there in the end. Um, Especially for RC3, so release coming three, we had quite a few issues with the deploying, and it took a long time basically to deploy. But um, the other things that I mentioned there, um, uh, I think Jacob said as well that you know, last minute 
measure quests. Uh, some of them were quite um, crucial anyway, because they were big parts, like the um, measurement build succeeds, succeeds and stuff like that, because we were actually creating more bugs because of that. Uh, since people were merging um, without knowing that the build has failed, um, that goes especially on, I think, yeah, Saturday, I don't know if on the release day, I think, well, definitely Saturday, both E and C um, master was, uh, were failing, basically, so the tests uh, were, were broken. And um, yeah, just feel free to, um, to have a look, there's quite a few things there. I'm not going to enumerate all of them now, but um, yeah. Uh, next is uh, Victor, working on large creatures. So, <clears throat> so uh, GitLab is getting bigger. We have already done a lot of the low-hanging fruit features from a product perspective. So we're making big bets. We have a lot more people on the team now. And so we're starting to create a lot more features that may take more than a milestone. Um, so maybe we haven't uh, been optimized or our, our structure and our processes have not been optimized to achieve those things. So that uh, ticket just links to a couple of solutions that a lot of us already know and have been chatting about, um, but uh, do take a look. Um, and truly it is a cross-functional problem to be solved. It's not just engineering a product, but everybody from UX to marketing, sales, how do we minimize the risk of working on a feature for maybe two or three months before it's in front of a customer um, how can we solve that risk as we tackle these bigger features and, and, and problems? Um, uh, Dimitri? Yeah, thanks. Uh, so what we've seen uh, quite often is that uh, even if RC1 is on time, then people start merging stuff and uh, we have delays with RC2, RC3 and bugs that appears uh, in the late stages of the release and then people basically, yeah, uh, do overtime merge uh, stuff like in last minute and uh, yeah, we have basically a less stable uh, release as a result. So uh, one of the proposals that I will mention kick off to uh, would be actually once we create RC1, not merge master into stable branch at all. So at this point, uh, basically since RC1, we will only fix uh, bugs for uh, the ongoing release process, and it will ensure that there is no migration appears during RC2 or RC3 in the stable branch that will block deployments, that will create new regressions and so on. Uh, yeah, Pablo? Yeah, this is something that we have been discussing for a long time, um, but never actually do anything about it. So we're talking about uh, finding a way to deploy branches on staging uh, by, by using containers. Uh, it's gonna take a while. It's not gonna be for the next um, release probably. It's a goal for Q1. But basically what I wanna do is I wanna lower the bar uh, for development to actually get uh, a big data sample and, and to deploy somewhere else that is not your machine, right? Uh, Still, if we have problems merging into EEC, et cetera, et cetera, that's not gonna be a immediate solution, but at least it's gonna be a way of getting feedback sooner and, and faster. So that's it, uh, to the kickoff now. Yay, to the kickoff. There's a link on the bottom, if you haven't clicked it already, to the kickoff document. You're gonna get three more seconds. All right. So 8.17, next best release ever. I hope you're all ready for it. Uh, first, some cool things. 8.17 will be the last eighth release. So that means that March 22nd will actually release GitLab 9.0, finally. Um, guess how many months it was, ago it was. Uh, and just to look back, I went to the blog post of 8.0 and I looked like, what did we actually do? And actually, it was at 8.0 that we integrated CI. It feels like an age ago, well, it was 16 months ago, but. It's still pretty amazing to think how far we've come since that very first eight release. Now having, you know, CI being a very major part of GitLab, maybe the main differentiator at this point. Uh, we shipped MetaMost Beta 1 at the time. So by now we're all very used to shipping MetaMost. And, uh, and at the time, and this is for some of the backend developers that still remember, we actually, we had satellites. So we had every repository had like a satellite repository where we did operations. And it basically meant that every repository took twice the size of the repository on the disk. Um, 
and we removed it in this release. So it's a really nice release. I think it's really nice to look back. Uh, it's also nice to see that nowadays we actually ship so much, so much, so many more things than we used to do. Like the blog post was quite short. There were some things, but um, so what we'll be doing and what is important this release? Uh, for one, making enterprise edition uh, better, right? We want to build great software for everyone, uh, but we're also a business, so we want to make sure that enterprise edition is a very attractive option for everyone, and in particular our customers. Um, of course, we want to bring ID to production and now with monitoring to the world. So we have all this cool power and well, now finally people can actually use it. You can start the trial on, on, on the Google Cloud and you can use it all yourself and we want to make that better. So with every single release, we want to make it better. Um, of course, we want to make it fast and always more awesome. I think those two are obvious, but especially the fast parts is something that we're investing more and more in. Um, those are the important things. And then I want to add a little note um, on scheduling and how we are always doing it. So we are making some changes to make it more asynchronous. So um, previously we had a scheduling meeting where we'd come together and discuss the scheduling. And um, I just want to make clear that this should all happen asynchronous. And we'll do our best going forward to all do this all neatly asynchronously and have like the next milestone already scheduled by the 19th, which is the date that I picked like, like this, so it might still change, but, um, and the same goes for this meeting, right? So the kickoff meeting, all this information that is here, should not, you, you should never have to look at the agenda here. It's just for you to get an idea what we're all working on, uh, but it should always be clear to you what is important for you and your team. So if that's not the case, then uh, bring it up. Um, and lastly, on that note, what, how do we make the asynchronous, the single source of truth for every single milestone for every single release is always the issues. So the, we have a particular mi milestone and single source of truth is the issues. So you never have to look at this document. You don't have to feel bad if you haven't seen this document. This is just to tell you like, oh, this is all the cool stuff we're working on for me to have another moment in a month where I can get all excited about everything. So with that said, Dawa, tell me what is next. What are we going to do? All right, so the first thing we're gonna do for 817 actually is not going to be released in 817, uh, which is um, that way on purpose. We are going to be preparing for 9.0. With every major release, we can make some breaking changes to the API and things like that. Um, and if we don't do them in 9.0, we would have to wait for 10.0. So to make sure that we get those API breaking changes in on time, uh, Tone and Oswaldo are already gonna be working on those API breaking changes during this release month. Uh, so the link points to a whole list of stuff that we want to change uh, and that we want to release with 9.0. That's the first thing, uh, which no one's actually going to see in 8.17, but we don't want to uh, wait with that stuff. Then for stuff we are going to see, uh, yeah. In order to make so API changes, people have to upgrade GitLab, but they're, the, the things that are talking to the GitLab API, they don't, can't upgrade it at the same time as 9.0. So I think that any changes we make should have uh, should just be deprecations of features that were added in 8.17. So they um, so, should already ship, ship in 17. So pretty, the thing that's gonna happen is that pretty much all of these things were actually gonna change. We're already marked as deprecated during the 8.x uh, live. In 8.17 blog post, we're gonna announce the stuff that has been deprecated up till now and it's actually gonna change you know, forever. Uh, in 9.0 and the parties that know, hey, we use one of these endpoints to change, they will have time before they upgrade to 9.0 to change their own uh, tools to, to adopt those changes. But, but some we're gonna have can, they, can, they, can they run 8.17, upgrade their tools and then run 9.0? Like are all the changes that we introduce in 9.0 already in 8.17? Um, I think no, because there's some things that were changing in a backward incompatible way. So they would need to update their tools and GitLab 9.0 at the same time. Are we very sure that those things are um, um, not backwards compatible? Um, I haven't looked for every single issue. We can definitely do that. Uh, what are you suggesting exactly that we would make those changes? So, in so 9.0 should only be deprecations of things that were added in 8.17. Um, I think we should discuss this further than an issue because there has been a road to 9.0 issue for a while where we came to a different conclusion, but we can talk more. Uh, the kickoff okay. is for time. Okay. Cool. So then I would like to talk, uh, give the mic, the mic to Mike, uh, who will tell us about stuff that's actually going to ship in 8.17 for platform. Great. Thanks, Dora. Um, I might actually, one of the things that we're doing is we're sort of 
grouping some of the EE and broader changes together. Um, so I might actually hand over to um, Regan first to go through the, 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 some of the first few changes. Did you see that? Uh, yes, I am. Um, all right, so um, basically we are going to uh, create an auditor user. So what is an auditor? It's going to be uh, the user that can, uh, uh, that will have the same admin privileges such as like look at all the issues, look at all the AMR and stuff like that uh, in an account, in an instance, but um, they, they won't be actual admin. So this is for uh, enterprise that need uh, this kind of audit uh, privileges. Um, We'll try to, well, I'm not exactly sure uh, what that means like, to get Elasticsearch in shape, but I assume it's about um, making it work uh, more reliably. Um, we will also continue the work on um, disaster recovery. So this is, this is a long project that we are, um, that, that we've been working on for uh, several months now, and we'll continue that and hopefully ship, uh, ship something in 8.17 for that. Um, about the small features improvements you want to take over, Mike, or? Yeah, absolutely. So with the uh, changes that we've got going in for 9.0 and some of the of sort of things that overhang 8.16, we don't have a huge amount of bandwidth in the platform team for improvements, but we do have certainly two um, changes that we're committed to. The first one um, is for one of our larger customers, I believe it's IBM. Um, and just allowing them to have impersonation tokens so that they can um, use the API uh, effectively through, oh, not through OAuth and through impersonation tokens. And then also allowing uh, people to adjust the way that the um, GitLab syncs to, to remote servers and ma making that configurable. And then finally, there's a stretch goal, which doesn't appear to be a huge amount of work, but that'll be, Creating GitLab with Microsoft Teams, um, which is starting to gain popularity and is one of our most um, popular, uh, sorry, is, is one of the most popular features, feature requests that we have from our user base. And that will allow um, uh, people running Microsoft Teams to get webhook support. So that activity coming from GitLab will go into um, Microsoft Teams. And then it's over to Victor. All right, um, so uh, Regis, I'll let you jump in. Second, yep. um, but uh, we're coming forward with issue boards. That's exciting. Um, it's been stagnant for a couple of iterations now. Um, so uh, right now, users can just drag issues into the uh, quote unquote board um, when they're looking at the board itself. So we have this backlog list um, concept, um, but it's a little bit hard to use because you might have a bazillion issues and you have to keep scrolling um, or you might need to search um, and so forth. So we're going to improve that UI a little bit and make it match the workflow um, use cases that we're aiming for for issue boards and then see how our customers react to that. And the other big change is that um, some customers has been asking for um, saving filters or saving the milestone in particular. Um, we think this reflects the fact that issue boards are used per milestone or a team might call it a sprint or an iteration. So it doesn't make sense that you see a board and it's not already filtered on that milestone. Um, so right now we're aiming to ship that as part of EE um, because with CE um, you just get one board and you can only change the name of the board. Um, so with EE you can uh, have multiple boards and also actually save the milestone with it. Um, so I'll let uh, Regis talk about the other ones as well. Thank you, Victor. So um, for the discussion part, we are doing, um, uh, we are adding an export issues in the issue list. Uh, this is going to be for EE. Um, so basically the ability to export uh, a given set of lists based on the filters that, that you have selected and let you actually put that on Excel and do some additional planning with it. Um, this is a very highly requested features that we are going to ship. Uh, we are also adding a new EE um, feature called license finder. So um, most projects actually uses uh, external dependencies. Um, 
uh, you know, like open source dependencies, stuff like that. But uh, sometimes um, um, those dependencies change their license. And uh, if you are a commercial project and you are using an open source license, and then this project change, would change their license to a copyright to copyleft. Basically, it's going to be a legal nightmare if, um, if something happens in the future. So uh, we are going to add a feature that will help you detect which uh, gem or what, which the external dependencies like gem, for instance, uh, change their license and uh, we will warn you when you want to merge that uh, a merge request that contains uh, the dependencies that have changed their licenses. Um, I think this is going to be very valuable for uh, most companies. And uh, Mark and Camille now to talk about the CI changes. So let me jump in, sorry, really quickly. Um, we are working on squash or more accurately, Sean is working on uh, uh, auto squash. Um, so obviously uh, a lot of customers are asking for it, competitors have it. Um, squashing multiple commits into one commit um, when you merge the merge request. Uh, sorry, Mark and Camille. <clears throat> yeah. So uh, uh, the big focus of the CIC team um, was going to be deploy boards. Um, given the new shift in the cycle of uh, RC1 cutoff, um, there's a pretty much a near zero chance of that actually merging in seven days. Um, so I scratched it off uh, just to let other people know because previously we had said we we're going to work on that. Um, instead, we're going to be focusing on uh, the rest of the stuff on this list. There's a pipelines trigger API uh, that we just need to do so we can uh, deprecate um, the build triggers API in 8.17 so we can kill it in 9.0. Um, another improvement that's been sort of long standing is this mini pipeline graph uh, that shows up on merge requests um, so that we can kill the builds tab um, in 9.0. And then uh, some chat ops improvements, some messages. And then a few other back-end things, long polling and uh, <clears throat> persistent volume uh, for the community stuff. Um, Camille can jump in anything else if anybody needs anything, but Josh, Prometheus. Thanks, Mark. Uh, so what we're going to do here for 8.17 is uh, add monitoring to the idea to production uh, workflow. And so uh, what we're going to do in this release is add the ability to uh, collect and display metrics uh, on the environments page. And so you'll be able to take a look at your environments uh, for communities-based auto deploys um, and be able to see uh, CPU memory utilization uh, directly within GitLab, uh, providing a single uh, workflow to deploy and look at uh, what's going on across your environments. Uh, so that's uh, very exciting and looking forward to doing that. Um, we're also going to be uh, adding a few additional uh, exporters uh, in the Anodos package. Uh, so you'll be able to collect additional information uh, on the health of the GitLab server uh, for uh, the self-hosted installations out there in GitLab CE. And so that's also something we're going to be continuing to uh, uh, include in 8.17. And uh, Jacob, on to you. Thanks. Uh, so, <clears throat> so for the, oh, there it is. Yeah, we're adding in uh, Webpack, which is already pretty much done, but we're going to put it in early so that we can see anything that would happen with that, which is going to help out the front end a lot. Um, and we're going to just see how that goes. Uh, there is two other issues that just the, there's obviously a lot of other things that we're doing. We're helping out the back end, Elizabeth, but uh, from a front end perspective, we want to make the large commits usable and we're going to also remove uh, jQuery uh, UI. And we are also currently auditing um, TurboLynx, but that's not on for this uh, release. That's just something we're doing for this release, but we're not removing it. DZ. Uh, yeah, so between drone, uh, the release process, how it's going right now. So we create RC1 from master branch and uh, we basically deploy it. And then after a few days, uh, we merge master branch into the stable branch again and create RC2 or RC3. And interesting thing is that basically all your aggressions, uh, all the problems that you faced during RC1, uh, they don't benefit you well when you again merge master into the stable branch. So you get new regressions, you get new migration, new problems and so on. And as a result, uh, we don't even strictly say what you can cherry pick uh, into the stable branch. So people get whole features ch cherry picked one day before release. And as a result, for example, a release manager is just burning himself trying to fix migration uh, because he cannot deploy, for example, RC7 uh, 
uh, to the GitLab.com or whatsoever. And basically, it's a RC, the risk candidate makes no sense because it's not really a candidate, it's just a random snapshot of the master branch, uh, which brings us no value of detecting regression and fixing bugs and so on. So uh, the change to the release process post means a merge request is actually saying that uh, you should not merge master into the stable branch. So RC1 created from master and it creates a stable branch and then stable branch goes its own way and you can merge into the master whatever you want during the whole uh, uh, development time, yeah, every day, but uh, we will We'll cherry pick into the stable branch only regressions and security fixes. This way, uh, regressions collected during one or two weeks of user testing uh, is actually usable because we can fix those and we don't have new regressions uh, appearing. The second problem uh, we solve is that we don't have a, uh, issues on late stage of release process when Somehow the new migration right before, two days before release appears that cannot be run on the production, which we experienced in last release and release before and so on and so on. And uh, particularly I want our release candidate to become actually a release candidate, which is from Wikipedia is a, a state of the source code when new features are not added. And that's his proposal in the merge request and uh, I'm going to apply it until like some, uh, huge amount of people put wet on it and the discussion will be in the merge request. So please put all your comments there. And uh, once we come to the conclusion, I will merge it and announce it in the team agenda. Uh, yeah, as a result uh, of this change, uh, we'll get a better uh, quality of release software. We won't get unexpected delays in late release candidates. 8.17 will be shorter because of this transition period, but 9.0 will be longer in a way of the uh, development cycle. And uh, yeah, again, because of the transition period, which will give us enough time to put some more of stuff in 9.0. Uh, yeah, thanks very much for, for a long intro. Uh, Marin, the build part. Thanks, Dimitri. Um, so if you take a look at the meta issue that I linked, um, we are, we missed our mark for 8.16. Um, a lot of things that are work in progress still and are nearly to be completed, but not quite there yet. So, uh, 8.16 is, 8.16 release issue was created with, with that in mind. Uh, I think we should be able to, uh, get everything that's on this release, uh, uh in this meta issue, uh, in. Um, there are a couple of things uh, worth noting. Um, ongoing HA efforts for the Omnibus packages, Postgres, uh, namely. Ian is on that one. And uh, we are also uh, receiving uh, feedback on the Postgres upgrade issues, and we are fixing them as we, we have them. I have to say that we didn't have uh, that many, uh, which does not mean we don't have any uh, left to fix. Um, we are also focusing more and more on all container related issues and cloud images and a couple of ongoing issues with uh, fixing the whole release process. Uh, we are getting to a point where we are going to have a package promotion finally done. Uh, I got reassurance this is going to happen this week. Um, and we are working still towards decreasing the package build time, which is a ma major pain point for, for everyone in the team and also the, the package size, which is actually not being helped by us adding more stuff in, but, uh, it's part of, uh, it's part of our, uh, roadmap. And there are a couple of issues that are still to be assigned. Um, Docker image vulnerability scan needs to be uh, addressed. We did most important things, but we now can uh, address some of the things that are uh, uh, lower on the priority list. Um, Jago started working on making GitLab QA more usable for everyone. And uh, one of the first tasks uh, of the build team is actually to help out uh, Jago to get a, a a move on on this and uh, like 
previously mentioned, we are going to add more uh, Prometheus metrics. Um, so that's a part of the effort with the Prometheus team. And uh, this week, hopefully, uh, we will also get uh, web pack for the front end team or with them result. Uh, one final issue to be decided, this is still be, uh, being discussed, whether we are going to officially have uh, SUS Enterprise Linux packages. This is a bit of a back and forth uh, between various uh, teams and external partners. Um, that's about it. Yeah, do you want to close the kickoff? Well, you could have done it, Mari, but I'm happy to. All right, let's make this the best release ever and get ready for night at all. Good luck, everyone. <laughs> Good luck. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 See you guys.